Good morning and welcome to another edition of Food for Thought for the Advent season. It is the second week of Advent. It is Wednesday, December the 9th, 2020. Welcome to all of you who are joining us. So um, most of us have probably heard of the Hebrew word for peace. Uh, the Hebrew word for peace is shalom. It's a, it's a word that's used very frequently in Israel today, but through the history of the Bible, uh, it was also used frequently. And actually, the word shalom occurs in the Old Testament approximately 250 times. So over the centuries, there has been a lot of talk about uh, what shalom means. There's been a lot of contemplation about it and reflecting on its complex meaning and use. Now, in English, the, the word for peace typically means something close to this, like the lack of war or conflict. But writer uh, refra for Reframe Media, I, I was reading an article by a, a lady named Robin Basselin, and she, she writes that while the biblical concept of shalom encompasses the sort of peace described in the English word, it's only a part of, the English word is only a part of what God promised his people. Um, in Hebrew, the word shalom um, includes peace, but it goes further. It conveys more of a sense of wholeness and well-being. Shalom is the ideal for our individual lives and for God's creation at large. It's a return to God's original creation before it was marred by humanity's sin. So that's the ideal shalom. Throughout the Old Testament, we see God unfolding his plan for reestablishing his peace on earth. Shalom on earth. Through the line of Abraham, we see God telling Israel that he will bless all of humanity through their line. And it's written in Ezekiel chapter 34, 24 and 25, that God made a covenant of peace, shalom, with them. Ezekiel writes, I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will make a covenant of peace with them and rid the land of savage beasts so that they may live in the wilderness and sleep in the forests in safety. I will make them and the places surrounding them on my hill a blessing. I will send down showers in season. There will be showers of blessing. Many of us are familiar with the words of Luke 2, from Christmas's past. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared to the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to, to those on whom his favor rests. So we know through this scripture that um, peace was a primary objective of Christ. And as a matter of fact, our Lord Jesus Christ came to usher in a new era and that by dying in our place, we can be made just as if we had never sinned. Romans 5.1 tells us this in that, as a result, we can have faith. And in our faith, we can have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, if we take refuge in Jesus Christ's words in John 14.27, when he says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, I do not give as the world gives, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid, we can take refuge in this, if we take refuge in it, through God's Holy Spirit, we can experience this peace as Philippians chapter 4-7 tells us that the peace of God, which transcends our understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds. We can experience this peace and indulge in this peace, but more than that, we can be ambassadors of this peace. God calls us to work alongside a spirit, to be the hands of Christ in this world bringing God's shalom to the earth. Matthew 5.9 says, 
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. And so as we reflect on God's peace this Advent season, may we be reminded of our role to actively make peace as God fills our heart, to make peace with others around us as we await the fullness of God's shalom through the second coming of Christ, where we read in Ezekiel of the peace that will come in the earth during the millennial reign of Christ. The question is, how can you help usher God's peace this Christmas season? Advent is the perfect time to commit to pursuing peace in your life that is greater than the world gives and is something that is uniquely given to the children of God. As we look ahead to the time of perfect peace, we can look at Revelation chapter 21, 3 to 4. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. This is the final result of God's plan of peace. May God bless you today. This is Food for Thought.